Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Gotta Be Geek. You know, it was an interesting coincidence considering just a few days ago some co-workers and myself were actually talking about our preferences towards Visual Studio Code versus Visual Studio, the IDE. And some of them watching this video may already know I'm a pretty strong advocate for one of them. And some of you that have watched some of my previous videos may already know the answer, but you'd also be surprised to find out some of the reasons why I never have just one of them installed on my computer, whether it's my personal machine or my work machine. Stick around and find out why. For those of you that don't know the distinct difference, Visual Studio Code is a text editor, while Visual Studio is an integrated development environment, or IDE for short. And while Visual Studio has multiple versions, enterprise, professional, and community, we're just going to stick to community for the purpose of this video because it's free! And who doesn't love free? But no, really, at least this way we're on an even playing field as far as price is concerned because Visual Studio Code is also free. That said, if you'd be interested in a video comparing the different versions of Visual Studio, the enterprise, professional, and community versions, let me know in the comments section below. A year or so ago, before the Visual Studio 2019 preview was released, if I had to pick just one of these development titans to live on my computer, it would have been an easy answer for Visual Studio Code. But with the 2019 preview for Visual Studio, it's definitely narrowed the gap between the two. Visual Studio definitely jumped back into the ring for another round, stepping up their game and fixing a lot of issues. Oh, and just to be clear, if you hear me say just Visual Studio, I'm generally referring to the IDE, while as I think many people do, if for Visual Studio Code, you'll just hear me say VS Code. Now, I could spend a couple hours talking about this, but I know that you know, we both know, you don't want to watch two hours of this. So let's set some categories to make this simpler and make it easier to establish an overall winner. Number one is going to be debugging tools. I know no one wants to have to print to the console to debug their applications. And if you do, dang, do I feel sorry for you. Number two, we're going to talk about performance. We're going to look at how each of them perform and how each of them impact the resources on your computer. Number three, we're going to talk about the look and feel. While each of them have the ability to customize the layout, where each thing generally is, is actually quite different between the two and how and how much you can customize for each one can be quite different. Number four, just text editor versus IDE. The elephant in the room. One is a text editor, the other is a complete IDE. Without any personal biases that can play a role in the first three categories, this one has some very factual differences that no amount of personal preference is going to change. With VS Code being a text editor, which means you can edit virtually any file of code, setting up the tools needed to debug, compile, and or run applications can be quite a bit more involved in VS Code compared to Visual Studio that provides mostly everything, if not completely everything, for you. First, we're debugging a .NET Core application. In Visual Studio, there's nothing extra to set up. We just go to the green play button with IS Express next to it and click it. Then the browser window pops open, and as you can see, our breakpoint gets hit. Then, moving over to VS Code, we first have to set up a launch.json file to tell VS Code what to do when we click on its green play button. Fortunately, this is an easy process because VS Code sees that we haven't created one yet and shows us the text to be able to click on so that we can create that launch.json file. Then, we get several options to choose from depending on our project, and since ours is .NET Core, it's fairly simple. Just click on .NET Core and Visual Studio Code fills in the rest. Now we can click the green play button and here we can also see that our breakpoint gets hit. And while conversely, whereas in Visual Studio, the browser window opened automatically, even though you didn't see it on screen, in Visual Studio Code by default, our launch.json configuration file that's configured for us by VS Code doesn't open the browser window automatically, but you can configure it to do this. In the description below, I'll include a link so that you can see the different configuration options that you can do for some of the different projects out there. Now, it gets a bit different when we want to run a Node.js web app. In VS Code, this isn't really different because VS Code is more folder-based, whereas Visual Studio is more project and solution-based. So in VS Code, we just opened up the folder just like we would have for the .NET Core application. But in Visual Studio, we're presented with two options, or we have two options that we would choose from in this scenario. So in .NET Core, while I didn't show it, you'd have the open project or solution option, which is what I selected. But for a Node.js web app, we're going to select the open a local folder option. The reason this is different is because when Visual Studio opens up a project or solution, it has a bunch of different background processes and analyzers that run. And you can simulate this same behavior for VS Code via extensions. But the advantage is, is that even though you're still opening it up as a folder for VS Code, 
it just manages to figure this out based on what's in the folder when you open the project, whereas Visual Studio, you need to run it as or open it as a project or solution to have the same behavior. Additionally, you can see here in Visual Studio that the file or folder layout is much different when you open it as a folder versus when we opened it as a .NET Core application earlier. Traditionally, when I debug TypeScript or JavaScript web apps, I just use the developer tools within the Chrome web browser. That said, both VS Code and Visual Studio have the ability to debug your JavaScript or TypeScript files in their respective applications using a process known as attach to process. Because setting this up can be a bit of a process for both VS Code and Visual Studio, I'm going to save that for another video and I'll include some links in the description below for some documentation on how to do this. I will say though that I think the process is a little bit easier in VS Code compared to Visual Studio. As I alluded to before, prior to the release of the 2019 preview for Visual Studio, performance was a top complaint for myself and many other developers. It was brutal. At work, we had some solutions that would have anywhere from 5 to 25 projects in them. And even for the 5 project solutions, loading them up in like Visual Studio 2017, for example, would be pretty slow. It would take what felt like a few minutes, and that seemed like kind of a long time to someone sitting there just staring at their computer, before all the background processes and analyzers were done booting up and you can actually get to writing your code. With a 25 project solution, we'd be able to go make a cup of coffee and then come back to our desk before we'd be able to sit down and start writing code. Sometimes if we tried too much while Visual Studio was still booting up these 25 project solutions, it would actually lock up or completely freeze Visual Studio for several minutes. The release of the 2019 preview was a welcome surprise. The same solutions, even the one with 25 projects in it, all load up incredibly fast with no crashes or lockups within seconds. This makes the time between opening a project or folder and being able to debug that application virtually identical, and it also is really on par with VS Code. As a result, I don't dread having to work with an application that is Windows specific and requires the use of Visual Studio. Just for some metrics here, I've included some examples here where you can see what both applications look like when they're running at idle. They're nearly identical with Visual Studio using slightly more CPU, but more memory and the opposite for VS Code. Next, you can see here we're running our Node.js application in VS Code. And now you can see we're running it in Visual Studio. And as you can see, both look pretty identical. Running the .NET Core app in Visual Studio and then VS Code, we can see that we use up more resources to run the .NET Core application, but they're still pretty equal. You've seen the basic layout for both applications so far, and personally, I actually really like the default out-of-the-box layout for VS Code compared to Visual Studio. I'm sure there's several great ways to set up Visual Studio either similar to or even better than VS Code, but I haven't spent much time on it myself. Both VS Code and Visual Studio have the ability to easily hide various tabs to conserve real estate. VS Code wins out on a couple items for me though. One of them is how you can split screen two files into two different tabs so that you can have two open on the screen at the same time. In Visual Studio, you can technically do this, but I feel like the process to do this is less intuitive due to the layout grid that Visual Studio enforces. The second one is the bottom panel. Both have a bottom panel, but Visual Studio doesn't include the terminal in it by default like VS Code, and VS Code makes this feel like a more natural part of the layout. In the bottom panel for VS Code, we have the default four tabs, Problems, Output, Debug Console, and Terminal. In VS Code, it's called Problems. In Visual Studio, it's called the Errors List window which has the neat ability to filter for errors or warnings in VS Code, and Visual Studio, the Output tab, gives you the ability to select a dropdown to show the output of various processes. But VS Code actually breaks out the Debug console into its own tab, whereas Debug is just an option under Output in Visual Studio. I again prefer VS Code's take on this. In VS Code, you can move the bottom panel to the left or right for preference, but the left panel with the File Explorer and Extensions windows always remains on the left. Visual Studio does give you more flexibility here with the grid system they've implemented, which gives you a near endless amount of options and flexibility to customize the layout to your heart's content. Lastly, Visual Studio, because it's an IDE, has way more going on and way more windows to choose from for various things. To be honest, I haven't used or even opened probably half the windows you can use in Visual Studio in the five or six years I've been using it. Because VS Code is a text editor and not an IDE, as we've mentioned before, it doesn't come with everything the same way an IDE does. For example, if I want to create a simple JavaScript website in VS Code, I not only have to install VS Code, but I also have to go to the Node.js website and install Node.js on my machine if I haven't already. 
Whereas in Visual Studio, if we look at the Visual Studio installer, we can see here that it shows all of the options you can select when installing it. You can see here that we can just select the Node.js development box and then we're good to go. What's also great about the Visual Studio installer here is that you can see what all of your options are and it pulls in all the different things for you if you want that option. Then you can see all the different items it's just going to install on the right panel and pick and choose specific options. While the editing process is virtually endless with VS Code because that's all you're doing is editing files, the integration with debugging tools and other things that help the development process can be vastly different. For example, if you wanted to develop a .NET desktop application like a WBF application, Windows Form application, or Universal Windows Platform application, you can certainly write your code in VS Code, but you wouldn't be able to debug that the same way that Visual Studio would afford you the ability to do. After all this, one might start to wonder, if both are free and one is an IDE with more raw development capability and just comes with everything, then why would I choose to use VS Code over Visual Studio? Well, there's two main things to consider here. Number one, what are you wanting to develop? If it's a .NET desktop application that requires the .NET framework distributions, then Visual Studio is probably the winner for you. If it's website development, basic C++, or Python, then VS Code is a great option. Number two, if I hadn't mentioned it or made it clear already, VS Code is cross-platform, meaning you can install it on a Mac or a Windows PC. If you have a Mac, then Visual Studio wouldn't be very free anymore considering you'd have to buy a Windows PC to be able to use it. So, unless you've decided to develop using one of the few frameworks that's Windows specific, then the decision between VS Code and Visual Studio is a pretty instantaneous one if you only have a Mac. Where does this leave me? Well, as I'd mentioned before, I always have VS Code and Visual Studio installed on both my personal and work machines, but it's VS Code that edges it out for the win for me as my go-to option. Anytime I'm developing or working on something, my first choice 95% of the time is going to be VS Code. Even though the gap between them is pretty small now, the look and feel, snappy performance, and just the simplicity of VS Code is what wins it for me. I'd love to hear what your favorite is and why. I'm definitely not a Visual Studio master by any means, so if you feel like you have preferences towards Visual Studio and why you think I might like it better than VS Code uh, with any kind of relation to the cons I've mentioned, then feel free to let me and the other viewers know in the comments section below. We've talked about a lot today, and if you want to keep the conversation going, feel free to follow me on Twitter using the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, feel free to hit that like button too. Don't worry, I'll wait. Okay, great. Thanks for doing that. Oh, and since they're down there, why don't you go ahead and click on that subscribe button and hit the bell icon while you're at it. Okay, well that's it guys. This was fun. I'll see you in the next one.